you feel something when you're in these environments. They're so wild, they're so vast. I think we've, we've caught, you know, the polar bug and mm. we will never recover, but I don't want to recover. <laughs> <laughs> Have known, right? Oh, so yeah. we would find ourselves on the roof of UNESCO. Crazy on such a good day in Paris. <laughs> Doesn't happen all the time. I mean, I think we met in this city, no? How many years ago? Uh, do you remember this adventure event we went to went together? That's right. Yeah. I think I was going to Antarctica. And I was going to the Arctic. Yeah. Which is, you know, the opposite of what yeah, we usually yeah. do. <laughs> and at the time I remember, I'll tell you now, with being pretty intimidated about meeting you because oh, I had really? been, yeah, I had been no following way. your adventures, especially the South Pole adventure, yeah, the yeah. crazy expedition mm. you did solo. We didn't have a lot of time to chat, but we instantly connected at the time. We, we clicked yeah. really, really quickly, I remember. And it was the first time I, I saw you in, uh, in public, in like live. And yeah, indeed, like I remember there was so many people, so, yeah. so much people around us. And we're like, oh, Heidi, you met you. Yeah, hello. <laughs> we need to, we need to call, uh, call each other back. Yeah, the call for the mm. ice, the call for the polar regions yeah. brought us uh, back together. Yeah. And we finally were able to uh, build something together mm. and really, I think, merge both of our fields of expertise in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Adventure, expeditions mm. and science. Yeah, but I feel like both worlds are compatible like we definitely need glaciologists like you scientists and people doing science doing reports but we also need i guess explorers communicators uh, people doing outreach because obviously when you're doing science you don't have much time to do communication and outreach and the explorers the adventurers uh, they can take this role uh, this position uh, this mission as well to try to educate and raise awareness about what happens in svalbard yeah. in mm -hmm. the arctic and in Antarctica and in the mountain glaciers. Do you remember yourself? Like, since when did you want to be a glaciologist? Yeah, you know, so I was born in the French Alps, yeah. in this small village on the foothills of beautiful mountains. And I just didn't know what to do with my life. All I understood was I wanted to be outside. I wanted to spend all my life in nature. And when I was a teenager, I actually met a mountain guide and oh, yeah? I talked a lot to him about his work as a mountain guide. And, mm. and this guy actually told me, you know, there are these, these other people who get paid <laughs> to study <laughs> mountains mm. and glaciers. Nice. And they're called glaciologists. And I thought, hang on, what? Mm. <laughs> that this actually exists? And so I feel it's such a privilege today to be a glaciologist because you get to work on, I think, some of the most beautiful landscapes on Earth. But also our science has become you know, very important. We need to study what's happening to mountain glaciers. Mm. We need to understand how they respond to climate change. And I feel today the, the, the responsibility, the challenge of continuing to share the science. I think I read stories about you that you were reading a lot of, you know, books about adventure, about expeditions when you were a kid. Is that what got you into this? Yeah, and I've been totally fascinated by the stories of Shackleton, mm. of Scott, of For Amundsen, sure. yeah. or the French one, like Jean-Baptiste Charcot, Paul-Emile Victor. And when I was a kid, I was just reading these stories. And uh, when I grew up, I told myself, like, this is what I want to do. Mm. Uh, and I got introduced to polar worlds, polar environments, mountain glaciers through books. And it's just like you, you just fall in love with, mm. uh, with, uh, with these massive icebergs, massive ice sheets. That's just so beautiful. And it's, it's hard to explain. You feel something when you're in these environments. They're so wild, they're so vast that you feel so small when you're in these places and you want to do something for them. Uh, obviously, they are at the front line, at the forefront of climate change. Mm. And we need to do everything we can to, to reduce our carbon footprint and try to save those places. It's not too late, but I got introduced uh, to these places through stories and books for sure. I think we've, we've caught, you know, the polar bug and mm. we will never recover, but I don't want to recover. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep going there and I, I want to keep building projects mm. with, you know, people like you. Mm. I'll always remember the call you gave me a few months ago. Oh, yeah. was telling me, do you, uh, do you kite ski? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. And you said, oh, it's okay. You just in three days, you know, in three days, you'll be, You're gonna learn. You'll, you'll be so good at kiting. Mm. Uh, we can cross the Greenland ice sheet together. Mm. And I was a little bit scared of it, oh, but yeah? actually, really? um, yeah, for sure. Mm. But actually mm. it uh, ended up working. Mm. So what did we do? 1500 kilometers? kilometers. Yeah, yeah. 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 south, north. And I think there's certainly something 
um, really clever about these types of expeditions. As you know, polar research is usually typically quite polluting. This is the way it's been mm. done for a very long time. Mm. And it is important because we continue, we need to continue collecting this data, but we also need to lead by example. But I love the fact that we're discovering this new world of conducting research expeditions mm. using only wind power to travel mm. across ice sheets. And I mean, now is the best time. This year is the UNESCO International Year for Glaciers Absolutely. Preservation. Yep. I feel that we're in a great time in history mm. to really shine a light on all the people working on these environments, on all the initiatives, all the the ambition that we need mm. to preserve those places. We need, we need communications, we need scientists, we need glaciologists, we need explorers, we need the politicians, and we need to work hand in hand to, mm. you know, make a difference. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I totally agree. And I think, you know, scientists have always secretly dreamed of being explorers <laughs> or adventurers. <laughs> mm. um, but this is also what I try to share when I work on, on mountain glaciers, for example, is how to make it relatable you know we mm. I, I try to tell a lot of human stories about you know the communities i meet in those places the scientists i mm. get to work with because the more we humanize the science the oh, more yeah. people will be able to identify mm. with it the more people will be able to trust it mm. and the more people hopefully will want to act mm. and i think it's crucial today that we tell them that this is not over you know solutions mm. exist oh. to preserve mm. these environments it's not too late to save our mountain glaciers. Mm. It's not too late to preserve the places you, you travel to, Greenland and Antarctica. But as you said, this will require all of us. Mm. And I think that's the beauty in it, mm. that we need to bring everyone together. We need to empower people to act. Mm. We need to tell them that no matter where you come from, you can actually make a difference. Mm. Obviously, it is the people who are, you know, the most privileged, like us, who also have to lead by example. Yeah, <laughs> I have a map I can show you. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh my God. Don't you have a bigger map, Mathieu? <laughs> <laughs> That's how big Antarctica is. Exactly, Antarctica, 25 times the size of France. So where are we going next? So basically it's a crossing going all over the continent for science. So it's going to be a, a tough expedition. Uh, it's going to be something pretty new and really incredible. I'm so glad we, we're doing this together. <laughs> I can't wait.